important, a big part of your life, so, and one that would affect you directly. Very good. So, um, and I would like to hear some more as well. Um, one time when, uh, Bill, when my mom got remarried recently, she asked me to be her maid of honor, and I, I had to really sleep on it for a while because, like, I barely knew the guy she was marrying, so I felt like I couldn't support it, so I had to tell her that I didn't want to go, which was kind of a lie, but that I just wanted to know more. So then, um, she started crying, and then I felt really bad. Okay, so again, this is a very, very important time in your life. And so all of the ones I've heard so far have been really big shaping moments uh, that have really um, affected all of you very deeply. So when we think about conflicts, we can think about very, very deep ones, very um, important ones that really affect us and shape the way we live. Very good. Okay. So writing about a difficulty is a good way to make your story more exciting. Stories without any conflicts or obstacles or difficulties at all are, end up being kind of boring typically, sort of like that birthday one I was writing about. So remember to ask yourself, what happened? That is a very important question. You don't want to confuse your reader too much. You have to introduce what is happening. We face conflicts and obstacles every day, actually. For example, deciding what to wear, arguing with a friend, running to catch a bus, taking a test, learning how to cook, trying to concentrate, trying to make a basket, overcoming a fear. And all of these are definitely more everyday conflicts and obstacles, definitely not as important as the ones you guys have listed so far, but they are conflicts and obstacles. So when we uh, are every day, we should really sort of look at our that day and think, hmm, where have the conflicts been, where have the obstacles been, so maybe if, um, let's have a look at what obstacle you faced this week. So I want you to um, look at some of the obstacles you faced this week, and they can be everyday ones if you like. So, uh, yes, carrying a really heavy backpack would definitely be an obstacle. Okay, another one, please. your cell phone, especially if you have to get it. For instance, if you have a lot of extracurricular activities or places that you need to go to and you're not able to get in touch with the people who will be taking you there or something like that, then uh, yes, that would present a big obstacle. And um, technology can sometimes be a little fickle in myself. I think that they should make cell phones uh, really work even underwater situations. <laughs> uh, yes, okay, very good. And that, that I think would be a kind of funny thing to write about. So, here is an activity. We've been talking a lot about conflicts and obstacles from our own life. Now write down that idea in one sentence, okay? So this should be pretty quick. Since you've already uh, orally told me most of your conflicts and obstacles, just um, I see you have paper and pencil so you can start writing. And then afterwards, if you like, you can share that. A conflict and obstacle with this. And remember, it can be either really serious and important, something that shaped your life. It could be an everyday thing. It could be something when you were little or recently. So uh, you really have a lot of fun there.
Okay, if you have finished writing down your sentence, or at least if you've like finished writing the second to last word, then you can raise your hand if you'd like to share that sentence with us. Um, it happened on Monday, I think it was, and my family couldn't decide what was for dinner. And then it becomes a big old argument, and then it, my little sister starts crying. Oh, okay. Um, when we had the fifth team in basketball, that we lost to by 40 points, and then we come back improving by a lot, and we only lose by three. Wow, okay. So that would be a good example of an external conflict with a, another basketball team. Very good. Okay, so your mom has a rare disease, and so you were in a car crash due to that? No, that's due to that. She had it when she was born, and she had a double fusion in her neck, so her neck is a really fragile. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So that is a very good one because there's a lot of tension in that moment and you're probably very worried and anxious. And so you can express those feelings very well in a personal narrative. Okay, very good job. Uh, one more, please. Okay, go ahead. Um, when I was around experience. Um, that is definitely, you know, I think that in that piece you could, um, when you're writing that about that, then you could really use a lot of good imagery there because, you know, waterfalls and, and, um, and camping, all those have really beautiful images. So you can talk about that in your piece and it'll make it very beautiful. Um, and then again, that, that's just very exciting and suspenseful at the same time. So that is an excellent one to choose. Okay, good job, everyone. Now, what do you want me to write about? Uh, burning something in the kitchen, being forced to eat something gross, learning to dive, choosing what to eat for breakfast, getting in trouble with my mom, or being nervous about giving a video conference. So as you can see, these are more everyday ones. Um, so I'll uh, narrow it down to, uh, I'll just choose two of these because there's a lot of options. Let's see, either burning something in the kitchen or being nervous about getting a video conference. So, if you want burning something in the kitchen, raise your hand. Okay, and being nervous about giving a video, giving a video conference, you can raise your hand. Okay, looks like burning something in the kitchen is the winner, so I am going to open up a document and start right now. Okay. So, here it goes. And, as I write, I, um, at the beginning of my personal narrative, I want to give my readers clues about my